Hi guys, welcome back to Anne Griffin Studio. This week I've been making a medieval town well. And it's covered in moss and greenery and it looks really cool and it's really easy to make. So let's just crack on, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to need for a well is some bricks. So I'm making lots of little foam bricks here out of XPS foam on the Proxon. And next up, those bricks need some texture, so I took them and I poured them into my tumbling box, which is just a old tubware tub full of rocks, and you just shake the hell out of it. And hopefully those rocks on the inside will indent and scuff up and scrape and round off all those bricks. Next I found an old piece of wood that I was going to use as the base, and I drew a circle on it using an old tea light as a guide. This would be the inside diameter uh, of the well. And then I just started building. I used individual bricks one at a time and I carefully built up in layers with a hot glue gun. And I wasn't entirely sure how far this would have to go. I thought maybe three high would do but after placing a miniature next to it I decided to go one extra layer higher and that seemed about okay in the end. Okay, now this well has a roof, so the roof needs some supports. So I used a bit of a balsa wood and I just trimmed off one edge of it. You'll probably notice that I'm not really measuring anything here. This is all eyeballed, just uh, holding things up and kind of seeing what height looks right using a scale model and uh, kind of just estimating where things need to be. So I cut off two posts of this uh, longer length of balsa wood. And just tidied up the top. And after offering them up I decided that I wanted to kind of trim the corners off one end of these so that a pitched roof would sit nicely on the top of them. Then I textured them to give them a bit more character. And then just using a hot glue gun, I placed them against the outside wall of the well. Now I definitely used way too much glue there, so I had to kind of scrape off the excess. But thankfully I learned from my mistake and put the glue on the well instead. Again, I'm just eyeballing this, I just that looked kind of roughly about right. Then I made a roof. Just used some graphics medium wet chipboard for this. Uh, each side of the roof is like three centimeters long. So I just kinked it in the middle using uh, a score mark and I realized that it was actually too long. It only needed to be six centimeters long. So I trimmed a bit off the edge. As you can tell, I'm pretty much making this up as I go along. Now I need to get a spindle through these planks of wood here, so I used a Dremel to fire a hole through these posts and then a cocktail stick or toothpick just very carefully kind of twisted it through 
the holes in both of the posts. And this is going to be the spindle which our rope will be attached to. And just clip the ends off, tidy them up. Now for a winding handle I'm using a piece of paper clip and I just bend that into like a kind of an S shape, two right angles just using some needle nose pliers and that's going to sit in the wood with some super glue. And then I attached a craft bead uh, right next to the wood on both sides just to give it a better finish. Now for the roof of the well, I could have done a few different things. I could have gone with shingles, I could have gone with a thatch, but I decided to go with a kind of tile roof and for this I used an egg box lid. Uh, normally egg boxes, at least in the UK, some of the cardboard ones are textured. Uh, at least on one side anyway, and I just thought that would be a good texture to have for tiles. So I sliced them into quite long tiles. Uh, the reason they're long is so that they overlap a bit easier uh, for when you want to glue them down. And then just take your hot glue gun, kind of splurge on some glue and stick them down. They don't have to be too neat, it's actually quite good to make them a little bit uh, off-centre sometimes. Now, a few of these tiles did overlap a little bit in various places on the ridge and on the sides occasionally, so I just trimmed them off with some scissors and then started adding some kind of bent tiles, bent in the middle and placed in exactly the same way over the top, over the ridge. Okay, so that spindle needs some rope on it, so I glued one end of the string that I used to the spindle and I just kind of wrapped it around very slowly and very carefully. This is a bit fiddly, but I got there in the end. For the string, for the rope, I just used a bit of string and uh, separated all the individual strands until I had just one. And then once it was on, I just used some PVA glue to kind of solidify it all and make sure it was all uh, nicely bonded together so that it wouldn't unravel. Now the edges of the tile roof looked a little bit kind of scruffy, a little bit untidy and I thought this is going to be a good opportunity to clad them up. So I used a bit of balsa wood, hot glue, just stuck it on. No fancy methods here, just eyeballed it, cut it off where I needed to, and do that for both sides. Now since the brickwork is basically all foam, um, I wanted to protect it with some Mod Podge and black paint, just the same as you would do with uh, any old kind of foam terrain, whether it's dungeon tiles or house walls or whatever. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm making sure to get on the inside as well and I also painted the bottom of the well so it would look uh, very deep and kind of like a, a black negative space. Then when that was done I just placed some PVA glue all around the base and covered that in some basing sand to give some texture. And once that was dry, I just undercoated the whole thing in some black primer. Now with a solid undercoat on it, what I can do is start adding colour to the brickwork. So I used a few tans and browns and things like that at first. Just picked out a few bricks. This is the same method that I would use to make a, a dungeon wall, um, just to give some variation to the brickwork and make sure it's not just too grey and boring. So I just added a, just a few bricks here and there that were slightly different colours. 
and then I moved on to the woodwork. For that I'm using a burnt umber, which is a very dark brown. This is a different method than I'd normally use, but I thought I wanted to give it a go. See if I could uh, make an interesting weathered wood look. So I'm trying it out on this piece of terrain. I then turn my attention to the base, which I used some game colour earth. Uh, very watered down and just covered the whole thing. Didn't want to use too much of this, so I watered it down fairly heavily. And then I moved on to the roof. Uh, I used kind of slate-like colours, like some, uh, some kind of greyish blues and things, so just to pick out some of the uh, slate and give it some extra depth. And now to really pick up that detail we're going to use a dry brush method using a fairly big brush and I'm using a medium grey for pretty much the entire thing. So all the stonework, all that well, all of the woodwork as well just to pick out the texture in the woodwork. You find a lot of the time wood tends to be kind of a greyish colour rather than brown. Uh, I wasn't overly happy with how grey the wood came out unfortunately so I wanted to try and add a step where I'd make it look a little bit browner than than it was originally looking there. And then I added on some of the grey again on the roof. You can still see those blues coming through on, on the slate. But those colours will all be eventually dulled down when the wash goes on. This is some Rhinox hide and I'm just going to go over the iron works so or the spindle handle and the craft beads on either end. So this is going to be like a, a rusty undercoat. And then I'm using some Rakarth flesh for the rope. Needed to water it down quite a bit. So I just added Rakarth flesh to all the rope. And to finish off the rusty handles, I added some riser rust. That's the usual method I use, and I just kind of put it on in blotches and then kind of attempt to blend it out, and you get a nice uh, patchy, rusty, authentic look. Then I added wash to the stonework. I didn't want to put this wash on the wood because it would darken down too much. So I actually use a different wash for the wood. Put the stonework on the inside of the well as well. Just to really darken it down and give it a much more grimier, authentic stone feel. Then I added some Agrax Earthshade to the rope to really pick out the texture. And finally, with all the paintwork done, I wanted to add some foliage. So starting with the biggest stuff first, this is the clump foliage by Woodland Scenics. And I just put it on very sparsely in very small amounts. I'm using some no nails glue here to stick it down. I find this works really well as long as you cover up all of the glue. As you can see I've also added some flowers there and as I mentioned earlier I wasn't overly happy with how grey the wood was looking so I just wanted to go over it very lightly with uh, a kind of very watered down uh, brown Vallejo wash. And I think this added put the brown back into the woodwork and but still kept that weathered old wooden feel. And I wanted to add some 
grass to this so I'm using usual PVA glue and I found a few different colour flocks so I'm putting on some lush green flock here and then some slightly drier sort of slightly deader grass and then finally I add some bit more dry and dead hair like grass Now you might know from some of my other videos that I absolutely love putting moss on things so I'm using Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Burnt Grass and I'm mixing that with some PVA glue which is, this is my usual method for making moss mix it into a kind of paste like this and then just add it in fairly small amounts to different places on the piece Personally, I think it looks really good when you can smear it in between tiles uh, and in kind of gaps that I think moss would usually accumulate in. So I managed to find a few bits along the edge and plenty of it on the top, up the side of the wood as well and on the well, on the stonework. Now this part here I wasn't overly happy with, it didn't look like it was very well supported. And I wanted to add a few extra bits of wood. so. Even though I said all the paintwork was done, I, I had to add some bits just for my own peace of mind. So I cut off a few pieces, painted them up the same way as I painted the rest of the wood on the well, and I super glued them to the posts. And then I just used some hot glue and I glued the roof down onto the top. Just as a finishing touch, I decided to add some visual interest. I put a little mushroom on the base because I'm a sucker for details. Alright, so there we have it, all done. Um, really enjoyed the uh, the build. It's really quite simple and really effective. I uh, love the uh, the moss. I think I went a bit overboard with the moss, maybe. I think it looks good. Um, I'm sticking by it. Um, yeah, and I didn't, I didn't want to put any water in it. A lot of people put water in wells. I didn't want to do that because the water level in a well is actually very low down like down here somewhere um, so yeah but I wanted it to be quite um, green and have a lot of vegetation and things because obviously wells are quite damp quite wet and people are always spilling water and things so yeah I think it looks really cool um, yeah very versatile piece every town's got a well pretty much I would say um, it's just a good bit of town scattered terrain if you like so yeah, that's it. I think that's all for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it and you found it useful or entertaining, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe as well and ring that little bell button thing. And uh, also check out my Instagram if you feel like it because uh, I'm on there now and I leave relatively useful, sometimes interesting uh, things on there. So feel free to follow me on there as well. That's all for this one though. I'll see you again next time. Stay safe and happy crafting.